What's up everybody, True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get here with the truth. Today we are doing the what's next on Carlos Adames, the WBC interim middleweight champion of the world, following his impressive ninth round TKO win over former unified junior middleweight champion, Julian J-Rock Williams, and what was a really good fight. Now before we get into that, if you guys could smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I try to build my channel up here. And if you don't like what I'm doing, you can always give me a thumbs down, leave me a comment, letting me know why I'm open to it. And that's it. So if, uh, so Adam is in J-Rock, I believe that headline, the June 24th Showtime card, and it ended up being a better fight than expected. Um, but I think Adam is, as much as I like him, has been built up a little more than he should be. Um, He's a solid fighter. He's, he's good. But, you know, let's look at his resume. He lost to Patrick Teixeira, you know, by a split decision. When he signed with the PBC, came over and narrowly defeated Sergey Derevchenko by, a, I think that was a split decision over 10 rounds. Um, then he destroyed Juan Montiel, a guy that Charlo didn't knock out. And everybody kind of went ape shit over that. And I don't know why, because Charlo, in my opinion, I just think he was overlooking Montiel when he beat him. So, kind of just, you know, workmanlike performance for Charlo that night. But, um, you know, everybody blew Adamas up. And then Adamas comes in against J Rock, who J Rock at his best is a decent fighter. And, uh, you know, Adamas, it was a, it was a competitive fight. The fight was stopped a little early, but I do think he had J-Rock on his way out. I do think he was going to stop him. And now he's the WBC, you know, he's still the WBC interim champ. So now the big question is, what's next for Carlos Adamas? And a lot of that revolves around Jamal Charlo and what Charlo decides to do. The WBC, shamefully, has allowed Charlo to remain the WBC champion after in a two-year inactivity. Uh, he's been out of the ring since June of 2021. Um, it's Ju it's July of 2023 now, and Charlo still hasn't fought. He still doesn't have a fight on the radar. We know he was planning to fight Canelo. He, 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 you know, Canelo tapped him after he signed a three-fight deal, but he said he wouldn't be available in time. So his, his brother, Jermel, took the fight with Canelo instead. And now we know Jermel wants to fight Canelo after that, you know? Excuse me. So... A lot is riding on it. Now, I believe Charlo's going to have to give up his 160-pound title to be able to move up and fight Canelo. So where does that leave a guy like Carlos Adamas? Well, I personally feel that if Jermall gives up his belt, Jermell is champion at 154, I think Jermell would move to the front of the line to fight Adamas and just fight at 160 going forward. Now... We really don't know what the hell Jermell's going to do after the fight with Canelo. If he were to pull off an upset, that's one thing. If he, what if he looks really good at that weight? Does he stay at 168? Um, I personally feel Jermell's going to fight at 160 campaign there, but he could also move all the way back down to 154, especially if a fight with a guy like Terrence Crawford is on the table. So there's a lot riding on it that has to do with Adamus. Let's run through the top 10 and see what the possibilities are. You got Triple G Gennady Golovkin. I don't think he's interested in Adamas. It wouldn't even be for a title right now. And, you know, uh, Triple G, it, I think when he comes back, he's fighting at 168. Then you got WBO champion Janabak Alan Canuli, Kazakh style. He's with ESPN and top rank. I'm sure they would love to fight each other to unify belts, but... I don't think the two promoters are going to come together. I don't think it's a highly publicized fight right now, so I'm going to say no. Um, Liam Smith. Well, you know, Liam Smith's highly regarded in the WBO. Uh, I think he fights for Eddie Hearn in the zone, though. So, I, you know, or something on that nature. So, I don't think, I wouldn't rule out that Liam Smith would be down to fight a guy like Adamas. I just don't think the promotions get together. But that's not to say they can't. I just don't believe they will. Then you got Arizlandi Lara. Now, I'd love to see this fight, but Lara looks like he's taking on Danny Garcia next. Lara is widely inactive. He has been for years. 
dude fights every eight, nine months, maybe. So after Danny Garcia, which I think he'll beat him, would he want to fight um, Adamez next? The possibility would be there of unifications on the table, but I think Adamez is going to want to return before that fight would be possible next year. So I'm going to say no. But I wouldn't rule it out completely. But we got to see what happens with Lara and Danny Garcia because that hasn't even been officially announced yet. Chris Eubank Jr. I doubt it. Chris Eubank's fighting Liam Smith next. And if he beats Liam Smith, or even if he loses, I think he's looking at a potential Conor Ben legacy fight. Um, you know, and I don't think he has any interest right now in fighting for a title unless it's a kind of a layup for him. So that's where I see that one. Uh, Vincent Galtieri, he's the IBF champion. Um, it, you know, if the IBF, or if Galtieri is willing to work with the PBC, which I don't see why he wouldn't be, he might, you know, sign on the dotted line to fight Adamas, especially if it were to be in a unification bout, if Adamas is upgraded to full champion, which I think there is a strong possibility of that. So we'll see. I, you know, we just got to wait and see what happens with the Charlo situation. Esquiva foul chow. He's a top ranked guy. He's coming off the loss to Galtieri. I don't think this fight's possible, but I wouldn't completely rule it out. Felix Cash. Um, you know, he's rated highly by the w, by the WBO. He's an undefeated Englishman. Um, I would I wouldn't mind seeing the fight. I like the fight, but I don't. I, he's not a PBC guy, and I don't think they're gonna put a guy like Felix Cash in front of Adamas next. And then Liam Williams. Um, another fight I wouldn't completely rule out because he is ranked in the WBC and Adobins might just want to stay busy against the guy who's been there and done that. But I don't see it. So Adamas, if he's upgraded to full champion, he's got a lot more options and potential. But I really think right now it's a crapshoot until we find out if Charlo's given up that 160 pound middleweight title. You know, I really do think that that's going to be an option. But I also believe, hey, you could see fucking Adamas next year against Jamal Charlo for the WBC belt. But in reality, I think he's just going to stay busy before the end of the year. It could be for the full title. He could fight just whoever's available. He could call somebody up from 154. Or he could just, or, or he could get a, a big fight. I'm leaning towards the less likely on that. Middleweight is kind of abysmal right now. And, and it's really sad because the middleweight title and that division deserves a little bit more respect, but nobody seems to want to refight each other, and it's pretty sad. But the good thing about Adamez is 154 is loaded with PBC guys that would likely move up and fight for the title. So, you know, so if he's upgraded to full champion, that might help out. That might help him out a bunch. So we just got to wait and see and go from there. But I like Carlos Adamas and I hope he gets a sizable, decent fight next. So that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on Carlos Adamas, the WBC interim middleweight champion of the world. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.